Namaste everyone. Welcome back children. Children, the topic that we are going to take up today is about adaptations in animals. And if we talk about adaptations, we know that adaptations are the special features that are developed by living organisms so that they can adjust to their habitat. And what is a habitat? Habitat is a suitable living place or a place where an animal naturally lives. And if we talk about animals, we know we find animals on land, in water. And then there are some animals which can be seen in the water as well as on the land. And then we have a category of animals which spend most of their time on the trees. So we'll talk about these different types of habitats and the animals that live in these habitats. So let us take up our topic, habitat. So children, before we take up habitat, let us take up a quick look at what all we are going to read under this heading, Adaptations in Animals. So first we'll talk about the adaptations for environment or their habitat. And uh, we have these different types of habitats, the terrestrial animals, then we have aquatic animals, then we have amphibians, aerial animals or arboreal animals. Then we'll take up two major terms that is hibernation and estivation. And then in next category we'll talk about adaptations for food or their feeding habits. And what are the animals divided into different categories according to their feeding habits? These are herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, scavengers and parasites. And the terms that we are going to take up in under this heading is the predators, prey and host and then we'll talk about adaptations for protection so animals they may protect themselves with the help of the technique camouflage or maybe they have very fast running speed or they have hard shells to protect themselves from enemies and then we'll talk about the importance of adaptations and under this heading We'll take up the topics extinct animals and endangered animals. And as I told you in this video today, we'll talk about adaptations for environment or for their habitat. So let us take up the term habitat. We know habitat is the place where an organism naturally lives. And if we talk about adaptations, so the special features required by an organism to adjust itself in a habitat are called adaptations. So like plants, animals also undergo changes to adapt to their surroundings. So let us try to identify the pictures and their habitat. So camel, we know it is found in deserts, then monkeys on forests, and then turtle in the sea. So these are the different habitats of different animals so let us take up the habitat of different animals so it can be terrestrial and under the heading of terrestrial we have three regions the polar regions mountain regions and deserts that we will take up in our discussion and then we have aquatic animals we have amphibians we have aerial animals and then we have arboreal animals so, so with this let us take up our first category of animals and these are terrestrial animals animals that live on land are called terrestrial animals and as i told you that climatic conditions on land they vary from place to place so for in first category we'll talk about adaptations shown by animals that live in polar regions and we know that polar regions are covered with snow. So polar regions are extremely cold. So animals like polar bears, arctic foxes, penguins, seals, walruses, etc. are found in polar regions. And if we talk about their skin, these animals have thick hairy skin and they also have a thick layer of fat under their skins which is called blubber. That means this layer of fat under the skin, it protects them from extreme cold of the polar regions. And due to the scarcity of food, animals like bear, frog, snakes, they sleep through the winters and this winter long sleep is called the hibernation so 
so that means some animals they hibernate during winters because the food is not enough and their physical activity slow down and they spend most of their time in sleeping only and you know where do they get their food when they sleep they get energy from the stored fat in their bodies and now let us take up the another terrestrial animal that is found on the mountains and we know that uh, snowfall is very common in winters on the mountains right so mountains also have very cold weather and animals like sheep mountain goat yak etc are found on the mountains and now again these animals also have thick fur on their body that protects them from the cold weather and if we talk about their hooves so they have strong hooves so that they can walk on the slopes of the mountains without falling so with this let us take up another terrestrial animal that is found in the deserts deserts have very hot weather and we know that deserts is a region with less rainfall so temperature goes very high so animals like camel lizard snakes they are found in deserts and if we talk about their skin so they also have thick skin and less hair so can you compare the skin of animals that live in polar regions or on mountains they also have thick skin but their skin has fur over it here the skin has less hair because it has to survive in hot weather and it does not need warmth so the skin also helps it to prevent the water loss from the body so that means thick skin does not allow the water to lose easily from the body so some animals like snails lizards and earthworms they sleep for a long time during summer to escape heat so this long summer sleep is called aestivation so winter sleep is called the hibernation and summer sleep is called the aestivation so let us talk some more about the ship of the desert we know that camel is also called a ship of the desert because it has adapted to its condition very well so let us see what all conditions make it stay in such a hot weather so due to scarce availability of water it drinks a lot of water at one time that that means it drinks a lot of water in one go and then it can stay without water for a long period of time and if we talk about the hump at its back so hump stores the large amount of fat and it has long legs and flat hooves which keep it to walk easily on the loose sand without sinking in it so basically these long legs also do not allow the heat of the sand directly touch the body and and if we talk about the hooves that means the broad leathery foot help them to disperse their weight you know evenly on the legs and in wider area so that they do not sink in the sand so it has double eyelids which prevents sand entering into the eyes that means it protects their eyes from blowing sand of the desert so with this let us move on to the next category of animals and these are aquatic animals as we know aqua means water so animals that live in water are called aquatic animals and animals like fish whale turtle octopus etc are found in water and let us see what are the adaptations shown by these animals so most aquatic animals they breathe through gills and fish have fins for movement and direction control that means they move with the help of their fins and if we talk about whales and turtles they have paddle like flippers for movement and definitely in case of octopus you can see these tentacles like structures that help them in movement so with this let us take up to the another category of animals and that is amphibians so animals that live both on land and in water are called amphibians 
frogs and salamander are the examples of amphibians so there are many but these are some examples so if we talk about adaptation so most amphibians have lungs to breathe on land and moist skin which help them to breathe in water so that means when they are on land they breathe through lungs and when they are in water they breathe through their moist skin and if we talk about the frogs so frogs they have well developed hinge limbs which help them to hop on land so if you look at these hinge limbs you know they help them in hopping on the land and together with webbed feet it helps them to swim in water so that means hinge limbs they help to hop and the webbed feet they help to swim in water so that was about amphibians and now let us take up the aerial animals so animals that can fly and spend maximum time in air are called aerial animals and birds bat butterfly dragonfly all such animals they fall in this category so let us take up the adaptations we know that these animals they have hollow bones which keep their body light and they also have boat shaped body to easily fly or glide in the air and we call it streamlined body if you remember that uh, streamlined body is a body which is narrow from both ends but it is broad from the center so it helps them to cut through the air and they have wings and feathers to fly and if we talk about insects so they have light paper like wings which help them in flying so with this let us move on to the next habitat and that is arboreal animals so animals that spend majority of their time on trees are called arboreal animals and monkey squirrel tree lizards koala bears etc all they fall in the category of arboreal animals so let us see the adaptations shown by these animals so they have strong limbs and sharp claws which help them to climb trees and we know that tail of monkeys help them to hang on the branches of the trees and if we talk about squirrel so a hairy tail of squirrel help it to maintain balance and avoid drops so if we talk about the tail of a squirrel so when it is too cold it keeps the body warm and when it is too hot it gives shade to the body and you know it flicks its tail uh, very fast when it senses some danger and you must have seen squirrels you know they communicate also with the help of their tails so so children that was all about the animals living in different habitat so let us move on to the keywords now so first is hibernation long sleep by some animals during cold winter months and if we talk about estivation so that is a long sleep by some animals during summer time aerial animals are animals that spend maximum time in air and can fly and if we talk about arboreal animals we know animals that spend majority of their time on trees are called arboreal animals and so let us see what all expected questions are list adaptations by animals living in polar regions list adaptations by animals living in deserts list adaptations by amphibians list adaptations by arboreal animals so i hope after going through this video session you are able to answer these questions and if you still have doubts then you may watch these video slides again to know the answers so children that was all about the habitat of different animals so that was all about this video session and in next video session we'll talk about the feeding habits of animals and into what all categories they are divided according to their feeding habits so with this Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and take care of yourselves.